today on this happy Father's Day. Now, usually Stan does this bit and tells you what's happening in this day in history. So all, I don't actually know anything about this day. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> Of course you were there. Of course you were there. I'm here. Why didn't I know I'm you here. were there? Right, right. All right, fine, fine. Yeah. All right, can I ask you then, what happened on this day in history? Well, today yeah. is be late for something day. Yes! Yeah, yeah. Yes! I, I was late. And do you know how hard that was for me? That's very difficult for you. That's very however, difficult for me. However, for me, it's a gift. <laughs> it's a gift. Yeah, yeah. And hey, it's also... Yeah. You're still upset about the be late day. I'm just taking that on. I'm it's taking also on pet rock. Day. Oh, pet rock day. Yes, yes. Uh, how, many, how many of you a have plant? a pet rock at home? We've got. What, what's your pet rock's name? Steve. Type it in the chat. Steve. <laughs> Is that because Stephen got stoned? Rock. Oh, <laughs> biblical we're, humor. And we're doing dad jokes. That's, That's a dad Father's joke. Day. Oh, there we go. Winning, winning, winning. Uh, wow, wow. Nice, and, nice, and nice. It's hey. also uh, National Cheese Pizza Day. Hey, Dad, right? I'm hungry. Uh, yeah. Hi, hungry. How are you? Yay! <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> you, you said pizza, I got hungry. Pizza, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but cheese pizza? I don't know. Isn't cheese pizza just margarita pizza? Is there a difference between cheese pizza and margarita pizza? No, it's the same thing. It's same the same thing? thing? So it must be an American holiday or something, you know. So, so yeah. So go get some cheese pizza for Dad, but put, hey, put some pepperonis on. Yeah, yeah. come on. Come on, come add on, the pepperoni. On. Are you an olive guy? I can't imagine you being an olive guy. Not really. Not yeah. really. I, 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 I would put olive. I order, when I order pizza, it's yeah. pepperoni pizza, yeah. olives on half because Deanna likes olives. And I don't mind if that's the left. You don't mind if they skip over the yeah, line yeah, a little yeah, bit? It's, it's a little okay, bit. Because they're really salty. I love salt. Anyway, I, yeah. I've got to give a quick tip to the dads who are trying to do a cook up, you know, in ISO. Just a quick shout out because of the pizza thing. The three pack pizza from Aldi, it's like six bucks and then you chuck whatever you want on it. It's like a margarita pizza, it's like six bucks, there's three of them in the pack, chuck whatever you want on it, Bob's your uncle, you cook lunch, you're a genius. You don't start with like flour? I do, every now and again, I do make my own pizza dough, I do. Make your own dough and your own tomato sauce. But sometimes fatherly exhaustion kicks in and you're like, fine, just eat. Here's some carbohydrate, just eat it. I don't even care anymore. Well, hey, hey, talking about cooking, you, you know what I got for Father's Day? Something to cook with? I got something to cook with. Cheese? I got a smoker. <gasps> Yeah. So I'm going to be smoking some brisket and some pork and some turkey legs. And, oh, I just, oh, wow. It's going to be I so much fun. I just want to say I'm coming over. <laughs> I, can't, I can't come over. <laughs> and that's why he's doing it. He's doing it. Just fill the neighborhood with beautiful smells of meat smoking. So, hey, may, maybe fun. when we're back, I can bring the smoker here. I'll, I'll perfect yes. the art and I can bring it here and we can... Let the neighbors enjoy it and invite the community to come in for that anyway. I want a sermon with you carving the meat as yeah. you see if we can concentrate through that. Hey, should we get on with the service? We should. And are you, are you a good father, Justin? <laughs> I think we'll know, hey, it, hey, we'll know no, it about 20 years' time. I'll ask your kids. Hey, is he a good dad? Jody, is he a good dad? I'm trying, I'm you trying, know, I'm trying. You try, you try. I'm trying. But, but, you know, we, we have a good, good father. We do indeed, we do. So let's sing about him. Let's do that. All right. It's who you are, it's who you are, 
is your call Be deeper still in your call Be deeper still in your call Isn't that great that we can know and rest in that we have a good, good Father. That's who He is, and we are loved by Him. That's who we are. Let's go to Him now in prayer because He listens to us as we share our hearts with Him. Father, thank You for being a good, good Father. Thank You for loving us when we didn't deserve it. Thank You for Your mercy. Thank You for Your grace. And Lord, as we look around our community right now, Lord, it's uh, uh, Father's Day. and We want to thank you for all the fathers. Thank you for, I want to thank you for my father. I thank you for uh, letting me be a father. And I thank you for all the other fathers uh, that are listening in right now. And I pray for them that you would give them great wisdom as they execute that very vital role. And Lord, as we look around our world, certainly it's still in chaos and trouble. And Lord, we just want to lift up to you all the chaos and trouble without even naming all of it. Lord, you know it all. You know it better than we do. And Lord, I would ask you to bring peace, to bring comfort, Lord, to bring hope to troubled hearts today. And Lord, as we have people uh, that uh, today would be a difficult day. Uh, as it's Father's Day, and they may have grief or loss or uh, unmet expectations. Lord, I pray for them right now that you would give them comfort in their hearts. And Lord, help them to, to reflect on some positive memories. Lord, help them to create positive memories today even. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for looking out for us. And Lord, we give you all the honor and the glory because you are the greatest father of all who show us how to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys, and father, for Father's Day, we've asked our kids to do something special for that. So here you go. What do you love to do with Daddy? Um, play soccer. I like going to the playground with Daddy. And swimming in the pool. The... The thing that I love doing with my dad most is play wrestling and me trying to escape getting tickled. We love our daddy because he teaches us how to play music and he teaches me how to play um, songs on the piano. I like going on adventures with my dad. Love reading with Daddy, the Nutcracker, yes. and this book is hey. our favorite. Huh? I love reading and I love doing it with my dad. 
Let's do it. Hang on, see a piece of here. I just missed that. Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day! Dada? Uh, uh. Happy Father's Day, Papa. I love you, Daddy! We love you, Daddy! You're the best dad in the whole world! Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. 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 Thanks, kids. That was fantastic. Thanks to everyone that contributed and uh, made. You know, it's, it's, you know, we're ISO Church, right? So it's great to see faces, great to see families, and we hope you're enjoying this Father's Day. Well, to make this Father's Day even more special, we're excited to welcome some WBC Dads. Hi, WBC Dads. Yay! <laughs> hey, Macca. Macca is here with us. Look, Macca. Macca's in Townsville. How's the weather up there, mate? It is warm. You're already, you're already a Queenslander. It's, it's warm. <laughs> I love it. I love well, it. Well, the, the locals are saying it's cold. <laughs> it's beautiful. So good to have you all the way, all the way from Townsville. Robbie's with us. I know you're a father of two this year. That's been exciting for you, mate. Got two little rugrats running around. Yeah, yeah. They've been, um, they've been keeping me company during lockdown. That's for sure. So, Brett, I know that you've been working for home for, from t for 10 years anyway, so you're just on fire. <laughs> and lots of, uh, lots of distractions around the house is, instead of just being focused on my work, uh, which is both pleasant and can also be you know, quite distracting, not getting quite as much done as what I normally would. Well, well said, well said. That, that, um, that, was, that was a general way of saying, leave me alone, I'm working. Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brendan's with us. Brendan, the Pong is coming up, and, mate, it looks like, unfortunately, it will be a Pong from home this time. Uh, I, I know that's a little disappointing because we're hoping to have it as a live event, but that doesn't stop the event from happening, does it? No, no, indeed. These guys are all guys who've supported the Pong in the past as well, and we're still going online. We're still, it's still happening online. There's going to be a live stream that's happening all over Australia. And that's going to be great. There's going to be, I'll be part of the, the hosting team on the Friday night. The youth will be part of it. Yep. And there'll be a bunch of people just getting involved in that. So it'll be still happening. Just remind us, what is the Pong about? Well, the Pong is, is just about raising money to, um, to protect against people who are exploited in the world, who are, who are trafficked against their will, who are, who are given, I guess, taken their opportunities away and given a life of, um, of slavery. And we want to bring those people out. We want to... We want to just be able to support and give money. That's what we can do in Australia. We can raise money. We are, yeah. we are wealthy, as I said a few weeks ago, and that's something we can do even so far away, even during a pandemic, is, is raise money for that. So, Hey, um, so we're going we're gonna to provide the links down below. We're going to provide the links in the comments section. I know that if you've got Brendan or Joe or any of the guys on your socials, you'll see that you can sponsor them directly. Uh, when is Pong happening? It's happening on the 10th of September. So we're doing... It's going to be the 10th and 11th, the live stream, but the main night is the Friday night to get yeah. involved from, from 6 p.m. Nice, nice, nice. Let's go back to the dads. Have we got the dads there with us? There you go. Who among you have, have tried to teach your children to play ping pong? There you go. It's just one of those things. For the rest of you who haven't, Rob, you're the only one that didn't put your hand up. Uh, the other old blokes will give you, give you a few tips, all right? Hey, um, Dad, I'm sorry for calling you an old bloke, but hey, by the way, Donnie, Happy birthday, 70 the other day. Thank you. You don't look Sorry? a day over 69. <laughs> yeah, well, my, my, uh, the decade of the 70s. Now, I'm living in the 70s. <laughs> 
You've been living in the 70s for a long time. Love you, Dad. Love to all the dads. Thanks for being with us this morning, church. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hey, thank you, by the way, for your giving. The giving continues to support the work of the ministry. And I know these guys are faithful givers. And uh, thank you to everyone that gives. The details are right down below there. Uh, Of course, you can use the app to give as well. And of course, Pastor Stan's eyeing me off in the corner and saying, don't you forget to tell them about the quiet time tool. Isn't it? It's a good thing to read your your word, isn't it, gents? Yes. (laughs) Go for it. It's a good thing to read your word and get the word into you. Let it wash you each day and let it give you wisdom as you go, especially for us dads and for those who want to be dads as well. G'day to all the parents, g'day to all the mums and dads out there doing things a little bit tough in lockdown, but we hope today is a great sense of joy and encouragement as you take part in WBC Online. All right, gents, obligatory Zoom wave. See you later. Hi, this... (laughs) It's Phil and Justin. We would like to say Mm. hi. Welcome back to a very special edition of Questions with Dr. Phil. Phil, are you a father? I am indeed. How many times a father? I have two children. Which one's your favourite? I have a favourite son and a favourite daughter. (laughs) Is it easier to be a father or a mother? Don't answer that, don't answer. 50% of the audience would say, Hey! 50% percent go, ooh. <laughs> Apparently they're all men. <laughs> all right, to all the blokes out there who are dads and for all the blokes out there who are serving in a fatherly role in a life, what is your sage advice, doctor, to all the dads out there? I, I've been pondering this, you see, because... Mm-hmm. You are a good you, ponderer. When you read the Old Testament and you read about uh, fathers in, in their role as fathers, mm-hmm. right? There's a lot of fathers in the Old Testament, but you don't know much about them. Not a lot about them. Not a lot about them. Yeah. Like David, for example, a man after God's own heart. He mm. was hopeless. Hopeless. Because, you know, he favoured Absalom, and look what happened. Get your kids to cut their hair, otherwise they get caught in trees. Correct. Anyway, yeah. I had long hair, but I'm a musician, so that's okay. My problem is I always yeah. wanted to grow long hair. Yeah. But it used to reach a point where it really annoyed me and I'd go and get it cut. Right. So I never got past the annoying stage. <laughs> In all the portraits of Jesus I've seen, he has long hair. He did indeed. So when we look at the scriptures, yep. we find that really in Paul's letters, he puts out some things about fathers. Fathers mm. don't exasperate your children, all that sort of stuff. Mm. He also makes it very clear that husbands are to love their wives like Christ loved the church. Yeah. The challenge for any Christian who is a father, for any Christian man, it is to follow the example of Jesus. You show compassion, you show love, you show mercy to everybody. But when you get in the context of a family, you are to actually treat your children in such a way that they don't turn around and say, to God, right? Right. Because because if I if I treat my kids in a way that causes them to turn away from God, that would really be a sign that I have not done well. And I appreciate that there are breakdown of families, etc. So this it's is always been there, hasn't it? Always been there. A lot of men do feel like failures in yeah. this area. Mm. Well, well, well you, that you should not feel like a failure because mm. what God does is God redeems our mistakes. The, the duty of any Christian is to let God change them. For a Christian father, letting God change you shows your children that God is at work. I am still changing. I'm still finding the fact that God has to keep reminding me that some of the things that we've been working on, I've let me guard down. Letting God change you so that your children, and if you're married, your wife, your friends, everybody, sees that God is changing you, so then they're drawn to God. Having said that, right? Having said that. As God changes you, you can't be pious. You can't be, yeah. you can't be holier than thou. Mm-hmm. You've got to be human. You've still got to be able to lose at monopoly. That's scriptural, isn't it? Can you? D- difficult, but scriptural. <laughs> A um, couple of weeks ago, I said to Pastor Stan, hey, you know, Father's Day is coming up. We're always looking for songs. And I said, I've, I've got this song that I wrote for my own kids uh, a couple of years ago. It might be six or seven years ago now and recorded it. And no one else has ever heard the recording. Eventually, we'll release it. But um, it was one of those moments where as a dad and 
I was sitting there having one of those introspective moments of thinking, have I given my kids enough wisdom? Have I given them enough understanding? Am I even smart enough to give my kids what they need or what they're going to need to survive the world as they go out into the world, as they grow up and inevitably face the challenges that all of us face? through life. You get this kind of moment or most people get this moment of, of safety in a family network and then you're sort of like you're released to the wild and you just have to cope with the coping skills you've got. And the, and the phrase, in case of fire, came to mind. You know, in case of fire, here's what you do. In case of flood, here's what you do. And I stopped and thought, I wonder if I've given myself, uh, given my kids enough of those in case of, here's what to do. And I realised, of course, as a person of faith that it's actually God's love that anchors me and holds me in those storms. It's not even wisdom that I can put into words. It's just that knowing that God is with us, even in the darkness of the valleys of life. And so I put together these lyrics on on the page that day and ended up putting them into a melody. And it's, it's just a song called In Case of Fire. And it just speaks about how my love will always remain for my children as God's love will always remain for his. So uh, with your permission, uh, I'm going to play that for you and we hope you enjoy it on this Father's Day. Did I ever tell you what to do in case of fire? And did I ever show you how to find the shore When the waves crash in I can't recall if we spoke much about The light you need at night Oh, but I know this child, my prayer, my love Remains Well, I could tell you now of all that I've done wrong Would it help? I guess I might, but yeah, it'll take too long Instead, okay, let's talk about the good And the greatness that is found Just by walking with the wounded who've been crowned Here's what I can tell you with assurance about It's true that it's quite simple Once you learn to just let go Well, you know it when you find it And you'll find it when you know And now there's a life more precious than your own Did I ever tell you what to do in case of fire? Did I ever show you how to find the shore When the waves crash in? I can't recall if we spoke much about The light you need at night Oh, but no, this child, my prayer, my love, remains, remains, oh, 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 oh. So here I hope now just in time that I confess. Cause I know you know my failings So I figured I'd present These things be sure I'm sorry for But I know we'll be unwound Just by seeking out The framework of the found And did I ever tell you what to do In case of fire And did I ever show you how to find the shore When the waves crash in I can't recall if we talked much about the light you need at night Oh, but I know this child, my prayer, my love remains Remains Oh, 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 oh In case of fire You know I'll keep on praying in case of fire You know my faith is sure In case of fire My love remains
Good morning, church. And hey, thank you, Pastor Justin, for that amazing song, In Case of Fire. Wow, that's going to be on the charts, billboards top, you know, for like the next year and a half, I think. And Dr. Phil, thank you so much for your wonderful insights and your humor that you just add so much joy during this season. Thank you, thank you, thank you. By the way, my name's Stan, if you don't know me, and I'm the lead pastor here and proud father of four grown children, three grandchildren, and another grandchild on the way, and uh, the lead pastor here uh, as well. Uh, And today's a day that we set aside to celebrate fathers. We celebrate fathers what they mean to us. And for some, this is an exciting day. Some of you fathers right now are enjoying some burnt toast as your breakfast in bed while you're watching church online. That's exciting stuff for you. Give those kids a hug. Love them for it. For many uh, of us, our, our kids, both young and old, will be using today to celebrate us and remind us of how important we are in their life. But for some, It's actually a painful time. Some of us grieve the loss of our fathers. My father died at the young age of 42. I was 20 years old when he died, and I wasn't yet, I hadn't grown up enough, I wasn't mature enough to have had those moments of being able to realize how important and impactful he was in my life and to let him know I appreciated his tremendous sacrifice in my life. The pattern of how we relate to our fathers kind of goes something like this down through the ages. When we are four years old, we say, my daddy can do anything. At eight years old, we say, my dad is better than your dad. At 12 years old, we say, my dad doesn't know anything, right? At 14, My dad is so embarrassing, right? And then at 21, um, my dad just doesn't understand the world today. Things have changed. And at 25, they start asking questions. Dad, why didn't you tell me such and such? And dads, you know, we told them and told them and told them, but they just don't remember. And then at 30 years old, they might think, oh, he comes up with a good idea every now and then, right? Right? And then at 35, they, they'll start saying, okay, we got to find out what dad thinks before we make this decision. At 50, we might be asking, what would dad have thought? And at 60, you might be saying, I wish I could talk it over with dad one more time. So my first challenge for you today on this Father's Day is... Very simply, for those that still have fathers around, don't wait. Don't let that progression go. Stop that cycle and appreciate them now. For others, it's a painful day because you didn't necessarily have a good father. Maybe you had an abusive father. Maybe your father was absent. Possibly you don't even know your father. And that makes today sad. Some desperately want to be a father, but for whatever reason, that hasn't happened yet. And it's uh, maybe not in the, in the plan. And, and you grieve deeply about that. Can I say, our prayers are with you. If today is a difficult day for you, we're praying for you as you celebrate uh, this day. In my reflection on what to share with you this Father's Day, I considered many of the fathers in the Bible, in in Scripture. There are heaps of both good and bad examples, and many times both good and bad examples are seen in the same person. You, You might remember Abraham. Abraham followed hard after God. He was the father of the nation of Israel. He, God told him, I'm going to make many nations out of you. And he followed God to the point that at one point he took his son and he was going to sacrifice his son on an altar. He's going to plunge a knife into his chest because God had told him to. God stopped him and rescued his son and, and all that. But Abraham then was the same one that ended up lying about who his wife was to save his own skin from the king. Then maybe you would have heard of Noah. Noah was a man who found grace in the eyes of the Lord and he built a big ark and he got his family on it, rescued him and his family and 
two of every animal uh, from the worldwide flood. And then when that was all over, Noah celebrated, he got drunk, ended up in his tent naked where his sons found him. And then David, wow, David, a man after God's own heart. He's the one who killed Goliath, and we love that story. But David is also the man who had a child with a woman who wasn't his wife, and then killed her husband to cover that up. The list could go on and on. And as I considered what example from Scripture to use today to share with you today, I remembered something. Back when I uh, was doing a a home reno, uh, back when we lived in in the U.S., I don't even try to do those things anymore. I realize that's not my my gift. But I was trying to build a wall. And when I tried to build that wall, I started with one stud, okay? And I used that stud, and then I marked the next board and cut that one, okay? And then I set the original board aside and I'd use that second board to cut the third board. And then I used the third board to cut the fourth board and so on, you you get the picture. But what I found out is the further you get removed from that original template, the further out you get. So what I decided to do today was go back to the original template and look at God the Father, Psalm chapter 103 and verse 13 says this, the Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. What that tells us is that there is an infinite, perfect, holy, majestic God who is passionately in love with insignificant, sinful, rebellious, apathetic, and indifferent people. God loves people like you and like me. That is a great example for us to follow. A guy called Jim Nicodem, he's a theologian, said this, when it comes to his love for sinful people, God's got a long fuse, a short memory, a thick skin, and a big heart. I decided today to use that quote as an outline for what I want to share with you today, looking from Psalm 103 as the text for that. It says in verse 7, he revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. And then the following verses are a echo or a quote from what he said in Exodus chapter 34. So you can go back and read Exodus 34 to get the original context of all this. But in verse eight, it says this, the Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and feel filled with unfailing love. So the first thing we learn here is that our loving father has a long fuse. He has a long fuse. He is patient. He was patient with Israel over and over and over and over again. Their pattern was something like this. They, God was blessing them, then they would decide to reject him. Life would get hard, they would repent, then he would restore, and then they would repeat over and over again. One of those times when Moses was on Mount Sinai, there hearing from God, getting the, the, the Ten Commandments, they chose to put all their jewelry together, melt it down, and make a golden calf, and they started worshiping this calf. So Moses then is coming down off the mountain with these two big stone tablets with Ten Commandments on it, and he saw what they were doing, and he got angry, and he smashed the commandments It's the only time that we know of that someone broke all 10 commandments at the same time. Yeah, dad joke for Father's Day. How's that? You know, when that happened, God was ready to destroy them and start over. He said, Moses, I'm gonna start over with you. And Moses said, hey, hey, please don't, don't. God held back. God was slow to get angry, full of unfailing love. You know, 
God exercises great patience with you and with me as well. And I'm so thankful for that because he wants us to turn from our sin, to be obedient, to seek forgiveness and follow after him. That's his goal for us. And it is so great that God has a long fuse because you and I are just like Israel. People haven't changed. We are just like them where we will will reject, repent, he'll restore, and we put it on repeat. Fathers and everyone else. By the way, this is a Father's Day message, but we can apply this to everyone in all of your relationships. We need to recognize God's example of having a long fuse, of his patience, and answer the question, how long is your fuse? How do you respond when when things happen that that you're not happy with? Are you quick-tempered and you respond in anger? Maybe you respond by abusing, heaping shame, guilt, condemnation on the person that you're upset with? Or do you respond with mercy and compassion? Do you respond with love and understanding, even in correction? Are you patient with those that disappoint you? Not only does he set a great example by having a long fuse, but it says this in verse 9. It says, he will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. That tells us that our loving father has a short memory. God is forgetful. Wow, wow. Okay, don't take that out as a sound bite and try to you know, tell everybody I said God forgets because we know that God doesn't forget, but he chooses not to get historical with us. Yeah. He doesn't keep a list of all the times that we have failed, and he doesn't bring it back up every time we mess up. I remember the, the, a moment that actually launched Deanna and I uh, into ministry. There were, we were new youth leaders in our church, and there was some families in the church that didn't like some things the youth director was doing. So they called a meeting with the pastor and the deacons of the day, and we were invited to this meeting, and we didn't know what this meeting was all about. And then the youth director's there, the deacons and the pastor, and we're there kind of in the background, not knowing what's going on. And they started going around the room one by one, sharing their grievances of the things that this guy had done historically. There was one particular person that I remember when they came to him. He reached in his shirt pocket and he pulled out a notebook and he started going page after page of his list of things that he had kept. The end result that day, Deanna and I became the youth directors. If I knew everything I know now back then, I would have probably said no. It was like, welcome to ministry. Had a sick feeling in my stomach that day. And we let them know that we didn't think what they had just done was was great. I am so thankful that God isn't like that. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 16, he, he paraphrasing says, if I kept throwing up in your face your past failures, you would wither up and die. You could not handle it. Aren't you glad he has a short memory? How is your memory when it comes to your relationships? Do you keep a list of all the times that your your kids have messed up? Husbands, wives, do you keep a list of all the times your partner has failed you? Kids, have you got your own list about how bad your parents are? What about your friends or maybe former friends? Do you have lists that you rehearse all the time for yourself of how those people hurt you? Let me ask you, how's that worked out for you? Did it make the relationship better? I know the answer. No way. What you did in that relationship, you you discouraged that person immensely. Made them feel like maybe they'll never be good enough because you're always throwing that list back up to them. Leads them to a place of, why bother even trying? I know I'm not going to get it right because you're reminding me of the failure that I am. Repeating past failures to those that we actually love results in a defeated, dejected person in very unhealthy relationship. Can I encourage you today? Throw away your list. Throw it away. You might spend a lot of time in prayer to throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. And if you've got a notebook, 
burn it. Really? Don't keep listing notebooks. God's example. I won't stay mad at you and keep accusing you. Our loving father, short fuse. Or long fuse, short memory. And in verse 10, he says this. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. Our loving father has a thick skin. The word the Bible uses for this is forbearing. If God punished us every time we deserved it, we would be in a constant state of discipline. If he gave us a time out or a spanking or whatever it is uh, that, that he would do, every time we had a selfish thought, every time we said an unkind word, every time we were materialistic, every time that, that we did something outside of, of what is holy and righteous, we would be miserable all the time. He chooses to overlook our failures sometimes completely. It says, love covers a multitude of sin. That's our God. Sometimes you and I, we need to just let something go through to the keeper. You know what? A kid may mess up and they may deserve punishment. But there are times, friends, that it would be better if we just let it go. Choose your battles is, is kind of the way I, I look at it when you're growing up. Because if, if everything's a battle, then you've got a war. And it's not going to be profitable in the end. They may deserve to be punished, but you can choose to show mercy. Why don't we do that? I believe it's because many times we don't do that. We don't show mercy because we ourselves have thick skin. We take the wrong that someone has done to us personally as an assault on us. For example, it goes something like this. Well, I've told the kid to clean the room. They didn't clean their room. So that means that they don't respect me. Or it might just mean that your kid doesn't want to clean the room. It might not have anything to do with their respect for you. Or maybe you've told your, your, your three-year-old she's not sharing Toys enough, even though you've told her time, time, you've got to share with your cousins and your brothers and your sisters. And now she's not sharing, so she is disobeying me. She is against me. She is defying my authority. Or maybe it's that psychologically, children don't understand the concept of sharing until they're seven or eight years old. Yeah. Friends, when people offend us, when people do something wrong towards us, We've got to have thicker skin and not take it all personally. See, we have expectations of other people and those expectations are built up for a variety of reasons. And when people don't meet our expectations, when our experience of them is different than our expectation of them, we feel disappointed. We feel assaulted like they did that intentionally towards us. That's thin skin. The reality is they may not have even known we had expectations. The example of our loving father, have a thick skin, be forbearing, show mercy, and sometimes just let it go. Yeah. So he has a long fuse, a short memory, a thick skin. And verse 11 says this, for his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. Our loving father has a big heart. He loves us immeasurably. We cannot fathom how much our God loves us. There is no end to his love for us. It says he's forgiving as far as east is to west. East and west never meet. It tells us in Micah chapter 7, 19, some other uh, pictures of what he does with our sin. He casts them to the depths of the sea. Isaiah 38, 17 says he puts it behind his back so that he can't see it. Isaiah 44, 2 says he sweeps it away like the morning mist burned off by the sun. Jeremiah 31, 34 says he will refuse to remember it. God has a huge heart for you. He loves you more than you can imagine. He's forgiven you more than you will ever know. And for some of you today, you need to lean into this. You need to hear this. Because there was a time at one point that you experienced his great love, his great mercy, his infinite grace. But you find yourself struggling 
to live in that space. You find yourself struggling because you know you and you're beating yourself up all the time. Friends, can I invite you to lean into his love, lean into his forgiveness? That's his heart for you. And then let others see your big heart from, for them. Let them find peace and rest knowing that you love them more than they could imagine. That no matter how bad things get, no matter what they do, you're not going to stop loving them. And forgive them like God does east to west. Have a short memory. So why? Why does our loving Father have a long fuse, a short memory, a thick skin, and a big heart for us? It tells us in verse 14. I love this. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Yeah, wow. When I read that, it made me smile. It made me choke up with a tear to my eye. He knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. He made us, and he knows that we are human. He knows that we are frail. Our loving Father understands our frailty. You know, we're going to have days when we are victorious and on top of the mountain, and we're going to have days when we fail miserably, and we wonder why he even loves us anymore. I'm reminded of Elijah. Elijah had a great day on Mount Carmel. You might remember the story where he called out the prophets of Baal and he, all day long they tried to get Baal to light a fire and uh, to no avail. And then uh, Elijah built an altar and uh, put water all over it and all around it and everything. And, and he prayed to his God and God burnt it up, right? You remember that? It was a great victory that day against all the prophets of Baal. He would be high on the mountaintop. But then... On the heels of that, Jezebel, the queen, got ticked off at Elijah and said, I'm going to hunt you down and kill you. Okay, he just took on 400 prophets of Baal and won under the power of God. When Jezebel threatened him, he did a runner. and He's hiding in a cave. What did God do on Elijah's bad day? Did he go to Elijah and say, you failure? You're lousy. Why did I trust you with anything? You just can't do anything right. No, 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 no. That wasn't our loving father. Our loving father met him where he was. He said, Elijah, have a rest. And Elijah, have something to eat. And God provided the food. And he said, have a, have a bit of a rest again. And then get up, have some more food. Replenish, refresh. And God restored him and used him mightily over and over again. You and I are weak. We are weak. God knows that. And that is why he can have a long fuse, short memory, thick skin, and big heart for us. Too often we forget that we are weak. I'm going to be honest with you right now. This is something I've been struggling with over the last few weeks is my own feeling of inadequacy. Feeling like in the middle of this pandemic and everything that we've been going through, like I don't even know what to do anymore sometimes. And as I was preparing this message, and I came to verse 14, it says, he knows you're weak and that you are like dust. You are just dust. It was a sigh of relief. It's like, thank you, God, because you know I'm weak. We need to embrace the fact we are dust and rest in the fact that God knows that and he will care for us. Think about that in your relationship with others. You know, God knows we are weak. Do we forget that others are weak? Do we expect too much? How do we handle it when they fail? Friends, if we remember that they are weak, we need to ask ourselves, if I remember that that, that you're weak, how's that gonna change my response to you when you let me down? If I remember you're weak, because I know I'm weak. Friends, I think we would stop and we would encourage them on their worst days. We would help them in their weakness because that, my friends, is when they need us the most. It may feel to you and to me like they don't deserve our care, our encouragement. They may deserve our chastisement, but friends, they need us the most when we think that they deserve it the least. We all need help. Let's wrap all of this up. We all need help with our relationships. 
Fathers, you need help, right? Moms, you need help. Kids, you need help. A few questions we need to ask ourselves. How long is my fuse? Do I just fly off the handle and get angry and abuse people when I'm upset? Or do I have a long fuse? Am I patient? How short is my memory? Do I have my list? Again, I would ask you maybe a little more gently this time. If you have a list, please burn it. How thick is my skin? Don't run around thin skin, just getting offended by every little thing. And then how big is my heart? Am I willing to exercise love and forgiveness over and over again? If like me, your answer to these questions isn't what you would like it to be, let me encourage you with this. If I acknowledge my own weakness and embrace the response of my loving father. First of all, start there. Acknowledge your own weakness and embrace the response of your loving father. Rest in that for a moment. And then if I do that, then I am able to accept the weakness of others and emulate the response of their loving father. Acknowledge your own and embrace his love, accept theirs, and emulate his love. Friends, it's Father's Day. Hope you enjoy it. I hope you go out and, uh, well, you probably can't go out, but make Father's Day as special as you can. Call your dad, even if you didn't think you had a great dad. Try to exercise some of those things today. And then in all of your relationships, have a long fuse, short memory, thick skin, and a big heart. Father, thank you for being a good, good father who loves us immeasurably, who forgives all our weaknesses. Thank you, Lord, for Psalm 103, verse 14, that says, you know that I'm weak and that I am only dust. Thank you for that assurance, Lord, when I beat myself up. Lord, I pray that everybody hearing this would be able to claim that And then rest in your love and your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thanks for joining us today. Happy Father's Day. Have a great week. And we look forward to seeing you back here next week.